Hey everybody, in this lesson we're going to talk about Bohr model. So the Bohr model is a model that we have that can demonstrate how the electrons position themselves around the nucleus. So how do we draw Bohr models? Now there's a few rules we got to know. First of all, our first thing we should know is that the periodic table, the atomic number, is also equal to the number of electrons in an atom. Okay, so what that means is, let's say for example, chromium. Chromium has atomic number 24. It has 24 protons, but it also has 24 electrons when it's in atomic form. All right. Now, there's a few other rules we gotta know, such as, for example, the fill number. So, Bohr model have shells. Each shell holds the following. Two, eight, eight, eighteen. Now, that 18 at the very bottom there, that last one is a little controversial because Bohr model is actually limited up to, really, uh, calcium. Once you get beyond calcium, you enter what we call the transition metals or the um, the um, the multivalence. We're going to run into issues there. So that's the second thing. Each shell could hold this maximum. The next thing we should know is something called the valence electrons. The valence electrons are our outer most electrons and they are found in what we call thus the valence shell all right so what do we do how do we draw Bohr models well Bohr models first of all we need to know a few things the first thing we need to know is number of electrons and then the second thing is how many go in each shell where you always fill inside out. You fill inside out. Okay. The reason why we fill inside out is because it's always lower energy to be closer to the nucleus in this case. We also want to make sure that electrons are as far apart as possible as well. And I'll show what that looks like with these examples. So let's draw the Bohr model of these elements. Lithium, aluminum, and chlorine. So we look at our example here. Lithium. Lithium is atomic number three. That means it has three protons and three electrons. So what do we do? Well, the first thing we should do is in the nucleus, which is this little guy right here, put an Li. Now it's kind of hard for me to do that with this, so I'm going to zoom in a bit just so it's easier for me to do this. So I'm going to put Li. That is our nucleus. So in our first shell, we can only fit, so Li lithium has three electrons. So our first shell, we could fit two. And these two are paired, okay? Electrons can pair as twos. Now I'll show you an example where we get to more electrons. So we have two electrons, we have one more to go. That next one goes in the second shell. So that's lithium. Let's look at aluminum. Aluminum is atomic number 13, so it has 13 electrons as an atom. So let's take a look at this one. Aluminum, put Al in the middle in our nucleus. We have aluminum, which has 13 electrons. So we fit the first two in the first shell. All right. In the second shell, we can hold eight, because the fill order is two, eight, eight, eighteen. So here we go. We have our first two done. We have 11 more to go. The next one can hold eight. So I can actually fill in all eight. Again, they can be paired right here and now. Okay. Now note that I'm filling them in a northeast southwest pattern. So northeast southwest. The reason why is because in each of these orbitals we can hold four pairs of electrons. And that's more of a chemistry 11 topic, but that's how we want to fill them. So we have used up 10. We still have three more to go. And this is where the northeast southwest goes. We like, electrons like to be as far apart from each other because of a law of static charge, which is that the same charge repels. Electrons are negative charge. So thus, they don't want to be near other electrons. So they want to be as far apart as possible. So we want to fill the next three like this. One, two, and three. Because they are as far apart as possible in their respective 
pairings. So let's look at chlorine. Chlorine, if you look at your PR table, chlorine has 17 electrons. So again, we fill in chlorine. Our first shell is 2. Our next shell is 8. So we fill it up like this, 8. And our last shell, we need 7 more because we have 10 here. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So as you see here, this one is not paired yet. So this is what the Bohr model visualizes, how the electrons are organized around our nucleus. But what does it give us? Well, we're really, really, really caring about what these outermost electrons do, which are valence shells. Our valence shells are very important because they actually are the ones that do the reacting and bonding for each of these atoms. So let's go into our next question really quickly. It says, what is the pattern of the Bohr model that you notice? Well, let's look at this. You notice how lithium has one valence electron. You notice how chlorine has seven valence electrons. Aluminum has three. The reason why is because of this. Row one, or in this case, um, element one, uh, column one, there we go, column one elements, if you notice the plus one charge, they all have one valence electrons. Okay, so all these have one valence electrons. Column two, our alkaline earth metals all have two valence electrons. Now these multivalence, we don't care as much right now, but let's go over to here. Our noble gases actually have eight valence electrons, thus they are full, we call it. Our halogens actually have seven, because chlorine, as we just drew, has seven. So fluorine will also have seven. Bromine will also have seven. Iodine will also have seven. Oxygen, then, will have six, because I have one less. Nitrogen and so forth will have five. Carbon will have four, and boron, aluminum, and so forth will have three. So if you look at it, how do you remember the valence electrons? You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is very important to know because that way we could find how many valence electrons each element has. So row column one or family one or group run equals one valence electrons. Group two equals two valence electrons. Group 13 has three valence electrons and so forth until you hit group 17 has seven and then group 18 has eight which is our normal gases so these valence electrons they determine our bonding and reacting which is very important to know. Because of this reason, this is why, for example, our noble gases don't like to react because they don't have that, really, that um, valence electron number that is either it's really close to a full shell or not. So we're going to a lesson tomorrow, or your next lesson, I mean, um, about that. So let's look at these examples here. Carbon, oxygen, sodium, magnesium. How many valence electrons does each of them have? So let's take a look. Let's look at carbon, oxygen, sodium, and magnesium. Okay, carbon right here, it's group 14. It has four. These elements over here have four valence electrons. So carbon has four. Oxygen, group 16, it has six valence electrons. Sodium, group one, has one valence electron. And last but not least, magnesium, group 2, has two valence electrons. So, as always, make sure you keep yourself safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.